remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Martha Scott in Best Reader Aldrich's Miss Bishop on the Hallmark Playhouse. Hallmark will bring you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we present a dramatization of Bess Streeter Aldrich's delightful story, Miss Bishop. You know, when we talk of a love story, we generally mean a certain kind of story. But if you think what the words mean, you'll probably agree that Miss Bishop is a love story just as much as any you've ever heard or read. Because the heroine found what she wanted in life, and as a good heroine should, lived happily ever after. For Miss Bishop was a schoolteacher, and her love was for children and for the job of teaching them. In the part of this fine-spirited and warm-hearted woman, we are fortunate indeed to have that fine actress... Martha Scott. And now a word about Hallmark cards from Frank Goss before we begin the first act of Miss Bishop. At Christmas, as on every memorable occasion, you'll take special pride in sending Hallmark cards because just as for hundreds of years the word Hallmark has been the distinguishing symbol of quality, so today the Hallmark on the back of your greeting cards is your assurance of finest quality and perfect taste. It's a symbol of quality. All who receive your cards will quickly recognize and realize you cared enough to send the very best. Now, Hallmark Playhouse, presenting Best Streeter Aldrich's Miss Bishop, starring Martha Scott. Miss Bishop's story begins on a June evening of the 75th year of her life. There she goes, up the stairs of Old Central, a building that's about to be torn down. Well, Miss Bishop, what are you doing here at this hour of the night? <laughs> Good evening, Chris. I just heard the news that Old Central is to come down at last. Yeah. Yeah, it looks that way, Miss Bishop. I wanted to go through the building tonight. It's rather childish of me, I know, but you remember the old saying, we who are about to die salute you. I... I am retiring, you know, Chris. Yeah. Yeah, I received my notice too, Miss Bishop. Three generations have entered this door. Three generations. Smell the chalk. I used to get excited all over again every September when I opened that door and smelled chalk dust and new books and fresh paper. Me too, Miss Bishop. But no day has ever been so exciting as that first day when the school opened in 1880. Remember, Chris, it was raining. Oh, I can see it as though it were yesterday. It was raining, and I had on a red and brown plaid dress with a long black cloak over it, and I ran up the stairs to get out of the rain and flung open the door, and there you were, and you said... Well, welcome to Central Hall. Oh, thank you. Well, who are you, and what on earth are you doing standing with the front door with a broom? I'm sweeping off the puddles as they come in with the people. This is oh. a brand new building. I don't want the floors all muddy. I'm the new Jonathan. I just got the job. Oh, well, welcome to you, too. I'm one of the new teachers. I guess we're all new together. Janitor, teacher, and Central Hall. <laughs> Teacher of English grammar. I remember the excitement of hearing the school bell. And I remember my first pupils filing into my classroom. And I remember how I, I suddenly loved them all so much. There were no words for me to express. Truly in that moment, my cup runneth over. Morning, Miss Bishop. Morning, Miss Bishop. Morning, Miss Bishop. Good morning, Miss Bishop. All right, class. You may sit down. Uh, <clears throat> class... You and I are starting out together. This is your first English class in college, and this is the first English class I've ever taught. I trust you'll learn something from me, 
and I'm sure I'll learn something from you. Uh, now then, if you'll please open your book to page one. How did things go today at school, Ella? Oh, wonderful, Mother. Oh, it's so exciting to help stimulate young people's minds, to slip adverbs and subjects and predicates into their heads before they realize it, and to watch them develop and grow. Oh, Ella, Ella, I hope you're not going to end up an old maid. Oh, Mother, I won't end up an old maid. Most girls let the right man pass by. I'll recognize mine when he comes along. And how will you recognize him? Oh... I'll know him by his eyes, because there'll be a, a question in them my eyes will answer. And I'll know him by his smile, because it'll make me smile right back at him. I'll know him by the things he says, because they'll be the things I've been waiting to hear all my life. And I'll know him by his dreams, because his dreams will be just the same as mine. Oh, I'll know when he comes along, Mother, and have no fear about that. I'll know him when he comes. Mr. Delbert Thompson is calling. He's in the parlor. You know, Chris, sometimes I think it's spring for only a few short moments of your lifetime. Sometimes I think you're young, just only a few short moments of your lifetime. Only a few short moments. Oh, Ella, you're the most wonderful dancer in the world. Master Delbert, let's go fast. Faster, faster. It's a beautiful day for a picnic, isn't it? Saint, who fried the chicken? I did. Well, glad to hear you can cook, too. That's a very important requisite in a lawyer's wife. Uh a lawyer's wife. Oh, Dale, have another piece of chicken. Ah, oh, look at that moon. I don't think there was a moon like that or, or a night like this in the world before. I'm so glad you thought of going canoeing tonight. I... I ordered the moon special for the occasion. I called up the weatherman and I said, make it a very special moon. Because tonight, I'm going to ask Ella Bishop if she'll do me the very great honor of becoming my wife. Oh, Jill. Oh, hang it. Has anyone ever figured out how to kiss a girl in a canoe? Of course, darling. You just land the canoe. Bishop, if you want your wedding dress fitted correctly, you'll simply have to stand still. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Bartlett. I, it's hard to stand still, particularly when you're being fitted in a wedding dress. Oh, I want to dance. I want to dance. I want to dance. Oh, it's such a wonderful world to live in. It's such a wonderful world to live in. Thompson asked me to bring you the note, Miss Bishop. Thank you, Chris. Dear Ella, I have asked Chris to bring you this note. Something has happened. I must see you this evening and talk with you. Delbert. Good morning, Miss Bishop. Good morning, Miss Bishop. Good morning, Miss Bishop. Good morning, class. Get out your books, please. Dear Ella, I have asked Chris to bring you this note. Miss Evans. Will you give the definition, please, for a transitive verb? Something has happened. I must see you this evening. Name the principal parts of the sentence written on the blackboard. Something has happened. Something has happened. Something has happened. President Corcoran, I, I want to ask you if my position has been filled yet. Why, no, not yet. Then I, I wonder if I might... If I might retain it, 
I, I'm not getting married, President Corcoran. I very probably never shall. I see. Are you, uh, are you quite certain that this isn't just a, uh, a lover's quarrel? Quite certain. You see, he, he married someone else. I eloped. It was quite sudden. Oh. Well, in that case, we'll just throw away these applications I've received for the job. I know the board will be most happy that you've decided to remain with us. Thank you. Miss Ella, you have fine young energies to devote to the students of this school. And teaching is a wonderful work. It's like, like carrying a flame, a living flame, to light the paths for all the boys and girls with whom you come in contact. Like carrying a living flame? If in the swiftly moving moments of your lifetime, you could pass on a little of the flame from the torch you carry, the service you will have rendered will be its own reward. I left President Corcoran's office with those words sounding and resounding through me. I walked into my own classroom, sat down at my desk. I forgot the pain and embarrassment that had taken me there. I only knew that the words he dropped into the aching void of my heart seemed like words I had waited for. And over and over I whispered to myself, I will carry on the living flame. I will dedicate my life to it. I will stay young with the students of this college, help them, serve them. My whole life will be theirs. And thus, peace entered my soul and even exaltation. For standing in front of that empty classroom that day, I felt as though I was standing before an altar. You were born to teach, Miss Bishop? Yes, Chris, I, I think I was born to teach. just a moment, we'll return to the second act of Miss Bishop, starring Martha Scott. You've heard about the famous Hallmark Gallery Artist Christmas cards. In the past, these unusual cards by foremost artists have been available only as full boxes and for name imprinting. This year, there is also a host of designs for you to select individually, a different card for each one on your list, if you prefer. When you see the Hallmark Gallery Artist Collection, you'll be delighted with the works of Grandma Moses, whose quaint artistry recaptures memories of white Christmases of long ago. You'll smile at the heartwarming scenes painted for this collection exclusively by Norman Rockwell. In others, you'll find gentle Madonnas, joyful cherubs, heralding angels, and cards that bring you the very fragrance of pine and bayberry, the sound of prancing hooves, the silvery tinkle of sleigh bells. Hallmark cards are sold only in fine retail stores. Here you can take your time in selecting from the wide variety at many different prices. You can be sure of finding cards that best reflect your own good taste and individuality. So look for the fine stores that feature Hallmark cards. And as you make your selections, look on the back for the Hallmark. It is a symbol of quality all who receive your cards will quickly recognize and realize you cared enough to send the very best. And now here is the second act of Miss Bishop, starring Martha Scott. Come, Chris, let's walk upstairs to my old classroom. All right, Miss Bishop. This <sighs> banister's as smooth as old ivory, isn't it? Made smooth by three generations of young hands. Some of those hands lie quiet now. Some are old like mine. And some are still young. Yes, yes. Here's my classroom. Here's where I got my hands inside young heads and like some women need and work a batch of dough I needed and worked the principles of grammar into those resisting young heads. It was here that you came into my classroom, Chris, in, in 84, to tell me I was needed right away at home. And when I got home, I found... I, 
found the baby. I remember my mother's exact words. This is Delbert and Amy Thompson's baby, Ella. They're both dead. The influenza epidemic. Dell asked that if anything happened to him, that the baby be brought to you. Dell? Dead? Yes. He asked that I take his baby? Yes. Look at her, Ella. Isn't that the prettiest little girl you'd ever want to see? <laughs> Here, let me put her in your arms. I always wanted a little girl. Look, she's smiling at me. <laughs> this little piggy went to market. This little piggy. <laughs> Look at her now. Does she have a name? No. Her mother never recovered from childbirth. And Dell never saw her. You can name her, Ella. And I shall call her Hope. Hope brings eternal in the human breast. Who brought her? Someone from the hospital. I told them you'd keep her. You knew it. Ella, you've never said no to any human being in need in your whole life. Now that I see her, I'm not so sure that Hope needed me as much as I needed Hope. Hope was the prettiest little girl I ever saw. Oh, Chris. Chris, look at this death. Hmm? All carved up. J.K. Remember who that was? No, I can't say offhand, Miss Bishop. I, I was in my middle thirties when he was in my class. You know, I had to keep that boy after school almost every day of the year. I can see him now, sitting there with his head on one ink-stained hand. I hate grammar. I hate it. I hate it. Well... Hate it or not, you still have to learn it. Well, now, let's, let's try again, Johnny. You use a comma before and, but, or, nor, neither, for... I've had to miss football practice every day this week. Johnny, you use a comma before... You use a comma before and, but, and, but. That's right. You know, you're awfully pretty to be a school teacher, Miss Bishop. You used a comma before and, but, or what, Johnny? You're the only reason I stay at school. I, I wouldn't stay here at all if it wasn't for you. Johnny, how old are you? Eighteen. Why? I'm 36. Exactly twice as old as you are. What does age matter? Why, in that book you read us last week, it said that age was a state of mind. Now, uh, Johnny, we're getting way off the subject. A comma is used before and, but, or, nor, neither, for, when they are used as what? I'm in love with you. <gasps> oh, dear. Johnny, Johnny, thank you. I know that's the nicest compliment you could ever pay me, and I shall remember it as long as I live. You don't care that I'm in love with you, do you? Oh, Johnny, of course I care. A teacher lives for the affection of her students. That's what makes everything worthwhile to her. And when they leave and go on to bigger things, a teacher feels as though she shares a part in all the things they do because of her part in their growth. You're, you're talking as though you were my mother. <sighs> Johnny, that's exactly the way I feel towards you. I'm sorry, but that's exactly the way I feel. The comma goes before and, but, or, nor, neither, for. A sentence is divided into two parts, a subject and a predicate. A predicate is... Yeah, yeah. I remember Johnny Kirk now. He's a senator now. Oh, the years go swiftly, don't they, Chris? Johnny Kirk, a United States senator. Hope has grown up and married, and her daughter's a student here, and I... I am 75 years old. It never entered my head that I... I would outlive my usefulness. The letter from President Crowder was quite a shock. What did... Yours, say? He said, he said there were to be several changes in the faculty, and he thought, he thought it much better that I know about the change in my own department before the board met, that I might prefer to get in my resignation before the board's action. There now, Miss Bishop. Oh, I, I am 
sorry. I didn't mean to do that. I never was much of one for tears. Well, it's time, isn't it, Chris? It's more than time. I have attended 52 commencements. I have sat at 52 alumni banquets. I saw Hope graduate, and tomorrow I shall see her daughter Gretchen graduate. Oh, Chris, I'm tired. I'm tired and old. And now that the days of each of those years have been placed upon my shoulders and slowed my walk and whitened my hair, I, I wonder what they were all about. I never was able to leave my responsibilities behind me when I went home. I worried over my students' grades and over their health and over their futures. And what is it all for? Youth must be served and it always forgets. We're old now, Chris. And the schools let us go and that's the end of it. Aunt Ella? Aunt Ella, are you up here? Yes, Hope, here I am. It isn't Hope, it's Gretchen. Oh, Time for the alumni banquet. Have you forgotten? Yes, I yes I had forgotten. After getting dressed in your lovely white lace gown. And Chris, you have dust all over your best suit. Look uh, at you. I I know, I know. I brushed myself off, Gretchen. <laughs> Better go meet your wife, Chris. She's waiting for you. Now come on, Aunt Ella. We don't want to be any later. No, oh, no. I mustn't be late for my my last alumni dinner. What time is it? It's almost nine. Well, we're late already. Come on now, come on. They don't like people to come straggling in late. Well, here we are, Annie. Now let me straighten your dress. Oh, you look lovely. Oh, come on, come on. Open the door and go in. No one will be looking at me anyhow. Good night. Goodness, I never saw so many people in my life. Just look at them all. It's the biggest reunion they've ever had. Come on, Annie, let's go. Oh, why am I getting up? Come on, darling, up to the head of the room. All for you. All for you. Listen to the school table. Right up here, Miss Bishop, to the head of the table. From all those hundreds of people out there. I can't seem to see my eyes, you know. They keep blurring. I, I must need new glasses. Miss Bishop, <laughs> as president of this college, it is my pleasant task to tell you that here to honor you are students who have remembered you through many passing years. There's a United States senator here who says if it were not for you... He would still be saying, have saw instead of have seen. <laughs> There's a prominent minister who says you influenced his life more than anyone in the world except his parents. There's a millionaire merchant who says that when we speak of mothers, we must not forget you, the mother of students. I realize that to you I'm a newcomer, a comparative upstart. But in the few years I've been here, I've come to realize that you are one of the chief representatives of the real spirit of the school. Courageous, progressive, high-minded, human. This evening has been planned to tell you that you are honored, Miss Bishop. You are honored and respected and loved and will be within the memories of everyone here tonight. Thank you, President Trout. Miss Bishop? Uh, Johnny Kirk. Miss Bishop, I have flown here tonight on one of the happiest missions of my life to present to you the highest degree that has ever been given by the college, a DMHS, Doctor of Mind, Heart, and Soul. Uh, class, come to order, please. <laughs> It is not given to many to see, as I see tonight, the completed fabric of one's life. Looking out on your faces, I suddenly see clearly why I became a teacher so many years ago and why I remained one. Your success has been my success, 
Your reflected glory this moment dims my eyes. It shines so much more brightly than I even dreamed it could. Your glory is so bright a thing that all I can do or say is... Thank God for having let me share your life, your youth, your memory. Thank God for showing me long ago how wonderful it is to teach. Thank God for sending me you as students and letting me be your teacher. <clears throat> if, if I could teach you one last thing, it would be this, which I have learned from you tonight. If every thread of your life's weaving is strong, and every fiber firmly woven in the truth as you see it and believe it, then life's proudest moments are the last moments when you look at the tapestry you leave behind you and are content. And now, God bless you. God keep you. The book is closed. Hail. And farewell. Class dismissed. Scott and James Hilton will return in a moment. No matter how carefully you plan your list, don't you always seem to run short of Christmas cards? Well, why not be prepared for last-minute needs this year by having several boxes of assorted Hallmark Christmas cards on hand? Just because they are Hallmark cards doesn't mean they need be expensive. For example, see the Hallmark box selections by Norman Rockwell, painted as only Norman Rockwell can paint them, with warmth and kindliness that capture the very spirit of Christmas. Each box gives you 12 selected cards for only $1. You'll find many famous Hallmark boxes, all reasonably priced, from 50 cents to $1 at the fine store where you buy Hallmark cards. When choosing your box selections, look for the Hallmark on the cover to be sure your cards have that Hallmark on the back. It's a symbol of quality all who receive your cards will quickly recognize and realize you cared enough to send the very best. Here again is James Hilton. Miss Martha Scott, you've certainly played our listeners, pleased our listeners tonight with your fine portrayal of Miss Bishop. You've made a memorable evening for all of us. Oh, thank you for inviting me, Mr. Hilton. I feel it an honor to appear on the Hallmark Playhouse, and also I enjoyed being Miss Bishop again. She had such admirable qualities in her devotion and interest in others. Speaking of thinking of others, Miss Scott, I do hope you're going to remember your friends this year with Hallmark Christmas cards. Why, of course, Mr. Goss. And I think the Grandma Moses Hallmark Christmas cards are especially beautiful this year. Thanks again for being with us, Miss Scott, and we hope you'll be listening next week when we present Christopher and Columbus, an amusing story of twin sisters who are befriended by a young American in their attempt to become Americanized a delightful romance in which we shall have starring in the parts of both twins one very fine actress, Dorothy McGuire. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Thursday. Our director producer is Bill Gay. Our music is composed and conducted by Lynn Murray. And our script tonight was adapted by Gene Holloway. Until next Thursday, then, this is James Hilton saying good night. Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember Hallmark cards when you care enough to send the very best. Martha Scott can currently be seen co-starring with Jeffrey Lynn in the RKO production Strange Bargain. This is Frank Goss saying goodnight to you all until next week at the same time when James Hilton returns to present Dorothy McGuire in Elizabeth Arnhem's Christopher and Columbus. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. This is KMBC, Kansas City, Missouri.